Hi everyone, welcome to um, Vinza's webinar for this quarter. My name is April and um, we're just waiting for everyone to join in. We've got about five minutes. Thanks for being early. We'll get started shortly. Thanks. Again, thanks to those of you that have joined early. We'll be getting started right at the hour mark. Um, let us know if you can't hear anything via the chat and or questions box. Um, we'll get started shortly. Thanks. All right, everyone, we've got about two minutes until this gets started. For those of you that are just joining, if you have any trouble with visuals, um, just put a note in the little chat box. We will do our best to refresh our screen if that happens. Um, for those of you that are listening in via phone, do know that there will be a recording and the slide deck will be available for you. Um, again, we'll get started in just a few moments. All right, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is April Rossier. I'm the Director of Customer Success here at Venza. Most of you have either seen an email come through with my name on it or heard my voice. Um, today, Kayla and I are presenting 
our Q3 webinar uh, for you all around the topics of information security and why the upcoming few months in regards to data breaches are so heavy. Um, Kayla Saldivar is our customer success manager. She predominantly runs the training and awareness side of our program here at Menza. And I wanted to let you know if you're interested in our last webinar that was very heavily based on SEQ work from the perspective of a QSA that is located on venzagroup.com under our previous webinars that you have access to. And then our upcoming webinar will be all about CCPA, so the California Consumer Privacy Act. Um, that will be done hopefully in November of this year. So again, tune in for those invites. For a little bit of housekeeping, most of you came into the meeting muted. We will do an open forum and questions at the end of this call. So hold your questions for that if you want to speak audibly with me and Kayla. If you're scared to forget a question, please note that in your GoToMeeting um, label on your session today, there should be a box labeled questions. You can type your questions there. We'll get to them as we can. Um, we are monitoring them on another monitor so that we can get those questions answered for you. Kayla and I will take turns. And so today, again, our topic is just the season for hackers and breaches. Here in the States, our big holidays coming up, our Veterans Day, you know, with sales all around, uh, you know, mall shopping, we've got Black Friday and Thanksgiving, um, a lot of Christmas holidays. Now, globally, sprinkled in there, there's tons more holidays that I haven't mentioned. So for our European office, it's going to be a different grouping. And so why is it so important that we protect our data this time of year so heavily? Those of you in the hospitality industry know that this is an uptick in your season for traveling families and making sure you're protecting those conferences around this time. And so we're going to talk about that together today. But before we get started, I want to turn it over to Kayla. Is there any housekeeping items that we've missed um, or anything you'd like to say to the group before we get started? No, I think you've covered uh, just about everything. I will be checking the chat box and also the questions box uh, periodically throughout today's demonstration, um, but welcome. Thanks, Phil. Um, I will note that we do have a few polls for you today, so we'd love for you to participate when those come up on the screen. Uh, I think it's just a click of a button. You'll give your opinion. We'll talk about those in depth. There are some handouts. I will note that we'll talk about some of this throughout. Um, if you have any questions, you can certainly download those. They will be available to you via that email that comes out after the call as well. Um, I do see a bunch of familiar names on the attendee list, so thanks those of you that I've met personally. It's really great to have you on. So let's get started. Um, just the season. So what is this webinar all about? So don't let the Grinch steal your data. Right? The Grinch in this scenario is that hacker, that criminal, that person that is out to get you. And I say that with a smile on my face, but only because all of us have the secret, right? We're watching out for it. We know what to look for. So we're going to try and protect our employees, our guests, ourselves, our families in regards to the holiday season and the uptick in guests and data that is presented at your location. So are you ready for it? Um, are there vulnerabilities around your location? So the topics covered today are around policies, data disposal, passwords, phishing, your human firewall, information security in general, secure server rooms, risk assessment, and utilizing Venza resources. Um, again, Kim and I are going to talk back and forth, so please feel free to throw questions in that questions box. This is being recorded, so you won't miss a thing. Um, and so our first topic is actually going to be policies. And in regards to policies, those of you that may be on our, our West Coast here in the States, don't forget that I mentioned earlier our next webinar is on CCPA, so the California Consumer Privacy Act. Don't miss that um, and be looking out for it. So in regards to policies and that nature, let's talk about them. So policies can be a time sensitive hurdle. Talking to our security team and our security manager, this is one of the most foundational items that your company, that your location, your property can put into place to create a procedure. Kayla and I have both been on property visits where policies will be in place and possibly the procedure is not following it. So you can have a really good set of procedures that you do that are not put into policy that may cause you to become non-compliant. Acceptable use policies, that is gonna be different across the board, but they follow a general pattern. Um, your Venza program may come with some policies and that may be something you implement. We also have a course around that in our HR suite. We'll talk about that more in just a little while. Uh, but it can be a showstopper. We have found that as a huge hurdle for SAQ compliance. Um, some of you mm -hmm. on the phone are actually part of our SAQ assistance 
and um, we want to make sure that you have what you need. So Vinza has some resources to use, but Kayla, in your experience going on location, talking to our clients, in regards to policies, is that common in your world as well? Absolutely. It's definitely important for everyone in your organization, um, especially your employees there at the property, to um, be aware of those policies that you have in place. Not only do you have them, do you know them? Do your employees know them? Um, and also inside of the uh, each individual's training, um, you'll also notice that we have something called the spot check, where there's a couple of different questions that we have. And one of those questions is regarding uh, do your employees know that there are policies in place? And so we take that information and propose it back to you so that you're able to gauge your employees' awareness around, a poli around policies. If they don't know that they exist or they don't know what they are, how can they possibly follow them? And I agree with that wholeheartedly. And you know, part of that is why we do risk assessments. That's why possibly some of you do um, remote sessions with our security team. That's why some of you do your, your own security assessments. That's why some of you do on-site assessments. The reason for that is, is it's easy to say, yeah, we're, we're doing that. But to have someone come in and look for it, put their hands on it, make sure it's visible. So I think that is one of the first questions we're gonna ask you in kind of a survey Absolutely. poll style. So Kayla, in true poll fashion, if you don't mind launching our first poll. I sure can. And so this poll, Question says, how often should you perform a risk assessment at your property? Okay, so guys, if you go ahead and select weekly, annually, monthly, quarterly, and daily, shouldn't take very long to get a few answers in. We're about 50% in. Some of you are probably thinking this might be a trick question. And <laughs> probably been 11 hours with Kayla in the past and we like those. Absolutely. We'll give it another 10 seconds or so. I think some people are even changing their answers, April, from what I'm seeing. Nice, so we've got you thinking. Good, so let's close that out now. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and share the results that we have. Perfect. Okay, and it looks like 11% for weekly, annually, monthly, uh, quarterly is 44%, and then daily is 22%. Um, and so this was a little bit of a trick um, question. So you should at least have a risk assessment at your property, at least annually. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't do your own assessments or, or your own checks and balances, but a true risk assessment, I would say annually. April, what are your thoughts on this? I do agree that annually is, is to meet the compliance by the PCI Council, right? You're wanting to make sure that you do that assessment um, annually. However, you can definitely make sure you are doing your part to make sure this is done daily in shift meetings, weekly with your management team, quarterly with your executive team, your corporate team, your management team, um, monthly, whatever your policy, again, we're, we're hearkening back to those policies have in place, the more those are in concrete and being used, the better you are going to be at recognizing vulnerabilities. So you may think, oh gosh, where is that policy? If you are familiar with these, you'll know exactly where it is and how to act in the moment when something comes up. And so that's a that's a great way to even think to yourself, you know, what what is the rule? Well, familiarize yourself with your policies. Make sure you're living up to the standards that have been set out there in the hospitality industry to keep your data safe. Um, so with that being said, we're actually going to launch our next poll. So we're going to use a lot of acronyms through this call. That's the nature of information security. Almost every industry out there has its set of acronyms. Um, letters here and letters there. Threw out <laughs> some earlier, CCPA. Um, we threw out another one on this slide, and it's called SAQ. And so some of you will know what that means. Some of you do not. So we want to make sure we cover it. So what does SAQ mean? Secrets against quails, sampling, assessment questions, security assessment quiz, and self-assessment questionnaire. Mouthful there, but go ahead and uh, let us know what you voted. Absolutely, we'll give it about 10 more seconds. It looks like most of you have already voted. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and close it out. All right, well, 
Let's look at the results. There's no tricking the crowd today, April. Everyone 100% said that it is a self-assessment questionnaire that is absolutely correct. Uh, no one picked that secrets against quails, April. No one, no one thought that that's what an SAQ was, but you are absolutely right, team. It is a self-assessment questionnaire. So that puts a lot of ownership on you at your location in your property management group. If you are on the executive team, if you are on a corporate team, a management team, this puts a lot of ownership back on you. That's why some of you have partnered with the Vinza team in regards to your security posture is that you don't know all the answers. Neither do we, but we darn sure can get you to a point where we do. Um, and some of those questions around security can be complicated. You fit in a different bracket because of your brand because of your merchant level, because of the way you handle data. That can be confusing, but at the end of the day, it is a self-assessment questionnaire that you have done your due diligence to protect your guests and your data. And so thanks for participating. Um, we are gonna move into our next slide. And remember that that self-assessment questionnaire, Benza can't make you compliant, but you can, and we are happy to help. All right, so next up, is proper disposal of sensitive data. Once you have it, what do you do with it? Um, so in just a moment, we are gonna look at um, a checklist that is possibly gonna be useful for you. Kayla, if you wanna talk about um, sort of in regards to disposal of data in our previous slide on SAQ, um, the annual assessment, if you wanna bring up that poll, I wanna know what folks think of how many have you scheduled it or have it. Absolutely. Let me go ahead and bring that one up right now. And this is just a general question, just to kind of gauge everyone that we have on the call. Uh, maybe you haven't had your annual assessment this year. Um, maybe you're a little bit confused as to what exactly is a risk assessment. What is it? How is it conducted? What should you be looking out for? Um, looks like about 27%, 45% of the voters have voted. We'll give it just a couple more. Um, minutes or seconds rather. Uh, again, there's no right or wrong, just simply to know uh, who's on the call and where you are currently. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and close it out and share the results. And it looks about, looks about 50% of you have um, had your annual assessment this year, which is great. Okay, and it looks like 17% for the rest. Most importantly, what is a risk assessment? Um, and I do see some of you on the call have not gotten that um, scheduled or haven't had it done yet, um, which is okay because there's still some time for the rest of the year to put those things in place. Um, what's great about that team is if you've already had it done, you already know what your vulnerabilities are, you've already worked with, with your management team um, with a security analyst of some kind to look at those vulnerabilities. If you have not, don't panic. Your compliance year may fall not over the calendar year, right? And so just make sure you're looking forward to doing that in the future. For those of you that said, what is a risk assessment? Um, that's gonna mean something different to everyone. Your risk may be in your hardware and software, right? With internal and external vulnerability scanning, with log and threat monitoring. Some of you, it may be your policies and procedures, right? Maybe last year you focused heavily on getting your systems and hardware up to standard. This year, it may be your employees. So work with a security vendor. Um, of course, we'd love it to be Venza, but work with someone to make sure that that risk assessment fits your needs and is meeting your compliance standards. So on this side that we're looking at together, how do you dispose of your PCI and or PII? Um, checking your trash. Uh, Kayla's going to talk to, I love she has an example that she saw on, on site where they have policy and procedure in place, but they weren't disposing of their, their data correctly. So I'm going to save that for her. But how you dispose of it will be differently and how you receive it. Um, those of you that are either in Europe or in other parts of the world, that will be different based on GDPR. But you need to be able to answer this question for your location. If you cannot, please reach out to us. We'll have that conversation with you. Um, and just make a quick note that you need to follow up on that. Um, especially those of you that are using web-based platforms to collect credit card data, um, like our friends at Certify, you absolutely are gonna be better off than if you're collecting that via email. Um, email is just very vulnerable in this kind of era of technology. And so Kelly, if you don't wanna share the example, um, I think you visited uh, one, of our, one of our friends here. Sure. Venza, and I know you have a pretty pertinent example there. 
Absolutely. So um, in visiting several different properties with uh, one of our security analysts here um, on the Vinza team, when it comes to proper disposal of sensitive data, one of the most common mistakes that I've seen at the properties is that your front desk employees, um, right? No one on this call, of course, but front desk employees are not properly disposing of sensitive data. Um, you as, as a, a as, a, as someone at the property that should be ensuring that um, data is properly disposed, when was the last time you checked the trash at your front desk? Um, is there sensitive data in there? Um, are your employees recognizing sensitive data? Uh, you definitely don't want to uh, give a, a potential criminal um, the ability to fish you, and that term will come back up later on in this presentation. Um, but definitely make sure you check that. That's something that's very, very commonly missed. Um, and yes, I have checked the trash at several different properties and most of them did have some sensitive data in there, whether it was a guest um, credit card information, a phone number, an address, a credit card authorization form, those types of things um, are very commonly found there. So maybe even after this call, just take a stroll up to your front desk randomly check the trash and see what's in there. I would urge you to also, if you're gonna be a trash panda for today, um, for those of you that are in the millennial age of memes, that would be our little trash raccoon. Um, if you are gonna check a trash can behind the front desk, please walk over to any food and beverage or POS terminals and check the trash there too. I would be very interested to know what you find. Um, hopefully you're pleasantly surprised, but the odds are you're going to find something that doesn't follow your policy and procedure, and that's going to be a learning experience for you and your team. Um, and of course, you can use one of the mini Venza resources to help share that with your team at shift meetings and over training Agreed. sessions. Yeah, and not only, I know we're talking about PCI and PII and, and the proper disposal, but what is the proper disposal? Do you have um, a secure way of, of disposing of that trash? Do you have a um, a paper shredder on site. Is there a third party vendor that you have that comes to pick up sensitive data to properly dispose of it? Those are the types of things that you should have in place. Um, not just simply tossing it in the trash, of course, or making sure that you're emptying the trash. That's not the proper way to dispose of it. That's great. And, you know, we've gone on so many site visits and we ask, you know, do you have a cross cut shredder? And we're like, they say, of course. Can we see it? And it doesn't work. Right? There's a sticky note on it that says, please oil or please see maintenance. Mm -hmm. And so guys, spend the money, go to Office Depot, get that, get that cross cut shutter. It actually marks off a checkbox on your SAQ. Yes. And so, um, you great. bring up such an excellent point, April, when it comes to fixing that shredder, as opposed to going through a very expensive breach, trust me, just spend the money on the shredder. Priceless. All right, so moving on into our next bullet, um, the PCI and PI include credit card authorization forms and personally identifiable information. So guys, we have a lot of folks that, that think those are, are siloed separately of each other. And when you're talking about meeting standards for the PCI Council, payment card industry, um, you are definitely talking about those things that, that roll all around credit cards, your firewalls that protect your networks and your um, vulnerable networks for incoming and outgoing data, you're looking at server rooms, etc. Personally identifiable information are things that may not make it into that world, but that definitely lead you to a risk. So um, those of you that have taken the Venza training, you have heard in there, especially on one of our slides that talks about personally identifiable information being your, your passport, your birth certificate, those, all those things can lead up to like opening loan documents and things doing insurance fraud. All of those things can be compiled into a profile that a criminal can use. So we've got the little branch still down there reminding you that someone is always lurking. There's always someone trying to cheat the system. Unfortunately, that's with your guest data. So if you don't know the answer, your employees may not either. That's the scary part. So if you're sitting here today questioning yourself, questioning your team, it's time to take a closer look. Um, that's what we're trying to do. We're heightening awareness so that you make a difference and an impact and the people that you impact make a difference and impact. So I'm gonna move into our next slide and it is our cybersecurity checklist. So um, Kayla helped me put this together based on several checklists that we have used in the past. 
checklist that our partners have used. Uh, this is not the entire list. However, in the handout section, it's there for you. Kayla, will you talk to this list in sure. its entirety? Absolutely. So uh, just as April stated, uh, let me direct your attention to the handouts um, that is on, uh, I don't even really know what to call it, your navigational uh, column is what I'm going to call it. Um, and basically, you'll see that there are four handouts. We have several different um, e-learning posters uh, that are located there, as well as this uh, cybersecurity checklist. And so although it does not mean to exclude, it should not just exclude these items that we have listed here, but these are some very common things, some checks and balances that you can walk around your property and ensure that they are in place to um, increase uh, the security there at the property. Um, some of the things that are listed here are some of the things that we've already mentioned, such as checking the trash, um, ensuring that uh, your P um, ensuring that your PMS system has a different network than your free or public Wi-Fi. Um, how often are you changing the password to your public Wi-Fi? Those types of things um, are some things that you should be checking on regularly. Um. Some of the things that are on that list too are maybe more extensive items that are not on, remember earlier when we talked about, is it daily, is it weekly, is it annually? Some of these things can be used daily, but you may want to pare those items down. Some of those things may be, you know, contact a professional to deal with your problems, et cetera. Um, and so make sure that you're using parts of that checklist that are relevant to you and your team. Um, we did see a question come in through the questions box while Kayla was talking about the checklist. I just wanted to make a quick plug for that. I went ahead and answered that question and sending it over. Don't forget, you can go ahead and put those there. We'll get to most of them at the end, but we'll try and monitor them throughout the call today. And so, Kayla, thank you for putting together the checklist. It is there in the handouts for you, and it will be available for you. So with that being said, let's move right into our next one, and it is all around passwords. So we cannot preach passwords enough. I feel like we talk about them in our training, we talk about them on phishing campaigns, we talk about them, um, gosh, in everyday language here at Benza. If you are not, maybe you should be. So I do want to reiterate, we talked about earlier deleting emails and, and giving up valuable information. So policies change, standards change. Make sure you're keeping up with the latest. So sometimes it's 30 days for this and 90 days for that. And one of the biggest things that we have found are those sticky notes that Kayla talked about earlier, sitting right on the front desk, or they're under the keyboard, or sitting by a POS terminal, or just even having a, an administrative card laying that swipes into a system. Um, that undermines the entire security system that you have set up. You can spend uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on some of these security systems, putting the right things in place, and it takes one human to mess that up for you. Um, giving up passwords is absolutely, like this bullet says, the keys to the kingdom. If you give a criminal a password, they no longer are a hacker. They're just using the tools that have been given to them, right? They're, they're not having to do any extra work. And so passwords are vital to be changed, even in your personal life. So this is a plug for you as an individual, a citizen of the world, rather than you at your property. Um, when's the last time you changed the login to your bank account? When's the last time you changed your login to your Gmail account, to your YouTube account? The longer those things sit out there, the more often you use the same password, we're all guilty of it, the more critical you become in being kind of a hurdle to your own data security. Imagine those passwords that you use on site, that every one of your front desk staff use, every one of your back of house staff use. Make sure that those passwords are being changed often and that they are unique to the user. So that's a common a risk assessment question that we ask. Are your system administrators logging in with unique login IDs rather than um, sharing a general password? That's even more common to get out that way. So make sure you're following those proper protocols with systems um, and security. If you're not sure what they are, let's get you on the phone with the security analyst. Let's talk through that requirement and make sure you're doing the right thing. Absolutely, so, I agree. Go ahead, Kayla. Oh, I was just going to say um, another potential uh, risk as far as how criminals are obtaining passwords 
um, and we're gonna talk about this in a, in a few more minutes, is phishing as well. That's another way that they can obtain um, personal or company data. Um, do your employees know how to analyze um, a phishing, I don't wanna give away the answer because we're gonna talk about this in a little bit. Do they know how, do they know what phishing is, is what I'm going to say. Um, be sure to ensure that they are aware of what that is. Absolutely, so awareness is, is everything, right? And so today we're talking really generally about information security. Uh, we're not getting down into the nitty gritty of requirements. We did a lot of that on our last webinar. Again, that's available to you. But today it's all of those curiosities. Are we going into the holiday season at our best? Are we the most aware? Are our on-call staff, our seasonal staff, are they ready, right? Have they been on the property? Um, so policy should prevent this behavior. However, we all know that the more rules you have in place, the harder it is to keep those. So make sure your policies are concise and that you have a way of checking them in place. And that's your procedure. So policy and procedure, two different things there. All right, I'm gonna move on to our next slide to make sure we have time to finish up here. Um, and it's utilizing phishing campaign data. So some of you have used phishing campaigns here at Venza, but I wanna make sure that we check your knowledge really quick. We're gonna do a quick poll. And so Kayla, if you don't mind launching that next poll, it's right in front Absolutely. of you, what is phishing? Absolutely, what is phishing? Is it a sport? Is it an illegitimate email intended to steal data? Uh, is it an, un an unauthorized person in a restricted area? Or is it a TV show? Please go ahead and answer now. About 69% have voted. We'll give it a few more seconds before we close it out and reveal the answer. Um, if you were paying attention to anything that I just said moments ago, I nearly gave up exactly what the answer of this question is. Okay. All right, let's close it out and reveal the answers again. April, there is no tricking them. Uh, everyone um, that submitted uh, an answer said that phishing is an illegitimate email intended to steal data. You all are absolutely correct. That is exactly what it is. And so to touch back on what we were just discussing in regards to passwords, um, are your users familiar with uh, what phishing is? Do they know how to analyze an email that seems to be legitimate? Do they know how to hover over the email address of the person that's sending them the email in order to determine its legitimacy? Are they doing that? Um, or are they clicking through some of the phishing campaigns that you may have received through Venza and submitting data? Not only that, but once the phishing campaign is complete, what are you as the GMs on the call or those that are responsible for receiving the results of those phishing campaigns? What are you doing with that information? We here at Venza will provide you with the individuals that did follow through with clicking on that um, illegitimate email, whether they clicked on it or submitted data. Um, are there steps in place that you're taking in order to ensure that that employee has been educated? Um, are they aware that they clicked on the email at all? Um, are you requiring them to log back into their profile um, to retake the email hygiene course that's there for them? Uh, so be sure that not only that when you get the results, you're providing next steps for the employee or employees at your property to further mitigate those risks. I completely agree. It is Once that data has been passed back to you, it is absolutely your responsibility to act on it, right? Um, we're not talking about calling out associates. We're not talking about slapping their hand. We're talking about giving them a training session, right? Providing them with the email hygiene course, uh, using our ransomware poster or email hygiene poster um, for shift meetings. Guys, the tools are there for you. Please use that data. Now, phishing campaigns don't always go off smoothly. You guys have spam protection, firewall protection in place to protect you from that. And so even working with Venza, whitelisting of domains and running phishing campaigns can be tricky business. However, once you have a true test go through, that's some valuable data for you and your team. Please act on it, use it. That is one of the best ways to check that information. Through the holiday season, there's gonna be an uptick in reward emails and gift card emails. And you're gonna have someone on your team get an email from your CEO or your CFO that says, please go buy 50 Amazon gift cards and load them with this amount of money. And out of the nature of hospitality, someone's gonna jump on that. They're gonna go to Best Buy, they're gonna load those cards up, 
and realize about halfway through the transaction that they may have done something wrong or that they may needed to have done something different. And so verifying an email is the best advice I can give you. Call the person up, hey, did you send this? We've gotten information from our clients before, even in regards to, to paying those right, for the services. And we say, hey, is this from you? And they say, absolutely, yes. And so just verifying that data. So moving into the actual slide, all around phishing, because we didn't want to give away the answer if you um, you guys all nailed it though. So analyzing the phishing results, random phishing emails, raise awareness. Even if you don't fish all of your team, right? If you just do a handful of your team, they're going to tell so-and-so about it. That person is become, going to become more aware of it. They're going to go home and tell mom or grandma or cousin or neighbor. And we're creating the spiral of eliminating criminals being able to grinch us, if you will. Um, it helps minimize ransomware incidents, um, putting steps in place to repeat, uh, in place for repeat offenders, retrain on Vinza email hiding course. What do we mean by repeat offenders? Most of you get at least five campaigns with your Vinza program. If you have someone fail every campaign, it's time to really have a serious talk with that person. They're either too eager to click an email, do their job, um, take care of that, or they're just not paying attention to the things they need to. So maybe that is a one-on-one -on -one session that you have with that person. Some people just are not receptive to technology, and so they don't understand that it can be a really big gap in vulnerabilities. And so making sure you use that data that Kayla mentioned, and um, I think we have covered phishing at its fullest. So I'm going to move right along, and we're actually going to talk about ensuring that all employees participate in Vinza InfoSec training. So as part of your program, there are many, many modules available to you that you can take part in. Um, Kayla, let's go ahead and talk about who, though. So if you don't mind doing our next poll, we get this question quite often. And <laughs> this poll is all around who should participate. So I'll let you take over here, Kayla. Absolutely. So the question is, right, it's more of a statement. Only credit card handlers should take the training. Uh, and so true or false? What are your thoughts on this? Okay, about 62% have voted. We'll give it about 10 more seconds before we close it out and reveal the results. Again, only credit card handlers should take the training, true or false. All right, looks like 100% of the votes are in. Let's go ahead and reveal the results. Okay, 10% of you said true. 90% of you said false. So this is where we got a little bit tricky. Um, if you know myself in April, if you've had meetings with us, <laughs> then you know we, we love to trick you just a little bit or just to pose some questions. Um, and the answer to this question is that there really is no right or wrong here. Um, it really is what's best on, uh, it's really based on what's best for you um, what your organization has put in place and what's best for your property. Um, of course, uh, if you've partnered with Venta, then as your, your partners in data security, we're going to recommend that everyone take the training. Why? Because it heightens awareness around uh, criminal behavior, things to look out for. It's building your human firewall, if you will. Whereas on the SAQ, it just says that you know, are, are your credit card handlers, do they, are they aware of what to look out for and different things like that? So it really is going to be based on what's best for you, your team, and what your corporate team has put in place. April, what are your thoughts on this question? Um, so it is a little bit of a trick question, right? Some of you are going to say, Venza, you, you told us everyone needs to take the training. And we do agree with that. We suggest all associates go through. At what level? That is up to you and your, your corporation. Some of you have brand training that pairs with the Vinza training. Some of you want your credit card handlers to do it because that is the requirement. Um, but there is a lot of PII covered. There is a lot more than just credit card data that can become vulnerable and lead to a breach that started at your location. So we highly suggest those food and beverage associates, those maintenance associates, housekeeping, et cetera, to take that training so that they recognize it. There are tons of examples of uh, you know, social engineering and other topics that we're going to talk about in just a moment that are covered in that training that would not be covered otherwise. If you don't already have a training tool in place, why not take advantage of it? And so that is that is my recommendation as your security guide and coach. Um, 
And so being proactive actually is covered here. I do want to mention in the sense of being proactive, not just about security, not just about passwords and server rooms. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But there is another big topic that we haven't talked about too much on this call. Um, and that is in regards to our HR suite. And so some of you have been talking to Vinza team members about our HR suite. That is becoming a bigger and bigger privacy need as well. Protecting your employees in a manner that, you know, we never thought would be this severe. And it absolutely is. Protecting diversity at your location. Protecting the diversity and relationship of your, in, your employees to each other, your employees to your guests, and between your guests and your management team. So that HR tools that are coming out, there's going to be different rules and regulations, especially here in the States in regards to states having different implementations. If you're curious of that, we have someone on staff that can help talk you through it. There are some things that we can provide via training. Some things are being required of the different states to actually do in person. So we have a few new PDFs that are state mandated. You know, even New York alone has different requirements for New York State as New York City, California, Ohio. Some of these states have very different regulations and there's no way to put in one training module what is required for everyone. And so we do our best to find the consolidated consensus. And then we're gonna give you the tools in regards to your state regulations as we have them vetted by legal teams. And so it's not just privacy anymore in regards to credit card data or PII. And so that's why we really, really focus on your whole team at large. It's crossing all bridges, right? So our e-learning managers at Venza are GMs and controllers and IT leaders and HR leaders. It's already becoming a global problem in regards to your entire staff. And so being proactive, locking doors, changing codes, changing passwords, not sharing, that is going to be huge in building your human firewall. Those are things you can do without ever purchasing one system or one hardware. You can do those things now. And so um, next up, I want to make sure that we do a quick poll and I want to talk about some different tactics that criminals take. So a last few look at, at what the Grinch may do this holiday season. So Kayla, if you don't want to launch our next poll and it is a question. Sure, absolutely. And just to, to um, piggyback on what you were just saying about increasing your, um, your property's human firewall, um, from previous experience of hosting a group training session at a property, um, and I know some of you are like, what, Vincent does that sometimes? Uh, sometimes we do, sometimes we have done that. Um, and in doing so, in hosting that group training session, at the end, when we were going through um, the assessment of everything that was covered, what was beautiful about that uh, experience was it created a conversation around data security of everyone in the room from different positions in the property, not just all credit card handlers, but um, maintenance, housekeeping, um, food and beverage, and also front desk staff, uh, all of these individuals were in the room. And it created a conversation around previous experiences that they had not only had at that specific property, but other properties that they had worked at from you know, from fishing or whether it was juice jacking and different things like that, that they had encountered. So it really builds up your data security village is what you'll be building um, by ensuring that everyone is knowledgeable about what they can do to further increase security at your property. Um, I will go ahead and launch that question now, April, which is what is vishing? Vishing with AV, okay? First uh, option is, Fishing with the letter V, uh, a criminal call that uh, attempting to gain guest data, wearing a hat to disguise your team from hackers, sending payroll via email. Uh, go ahead and make your selection. There's about 40% that have voted. We'll give it a few more seconds before we reveal the results and the answer. Okay, about 62% going once, going twice, and let's go ahead and close it out. I'm gonna go ahead and share the results. And again, 
I don't know, April. I think we may have to come up with some harder <laughs> questions next time. Everyone got this one right. A uh, criminal call. Uh, attempting to gain guest data, that is absolutely correct. And so with that said, another reason why it's very imperative that you check your trash from time to time. How easy would it be for someone that um, is criminal minded to, to go through your trash, they drop something maybe, um, and obtain a guest's information, and then reach out to that guest and say, hey, this is, this is John calling from um, ABC Hilton, um, you recently visited us. We had some issues with your credit card. Uh, we just need you to verify your credit card information. That specific guest knew that they just recently stayed there. They may be willing to go ahead if they're not knowledgeable about criminal behaviors and go ahead and um, confirm their credit card that they had on file. Yikes. So another good reason to ensure that your trash um, whether, again, like to April's point, um, whether that's near the food and beverage area, your front desk area, et cetera, ensure that there's not any uh, sensitive data there. Um, absolutely. Uh, I can't stress enough that criminals are just getting smarter or either we're just creating new avenues for them to become more um, creative. More maybe. Creative. Yeah, creative <laughs> is a great word for it. There's so many terms that actually we did put in the handout section two of our break room posters um, around how criminals acquire sensitive data. The fact that we even have to have two posters to cover all the ways is a little ridiculous. There is also a social engineering vishing poster that is um, one of our latest posters that is available to you. And the reason we brought those up is actually we've heard from one of our partners and then literally the next day heard from another client that had almost the exact same scenario. So someone calls in, they get the front desk. Front desk transfers to room service. And that all led to basically the criminal speaking to someone in a room and using the disguise of being part of the staff to get credit card information, to verify credit card information. And how that all could have been avoided was literally if the front desk person operator had introduced the person on the phone to the person in room service rather than just doing a transfer so that they could not impersonate the front desk person that they were just speaking with. It's something so simple that we can do. Um, in that regard, we've got server room secure on here. This is a big one that we see on location. I wanted to mention briefly um, server room access. So we talk about in our training, tailgating and piggybacking. Both of those are basically lurking around restricted areas, finding a way in, whether that's following in after uh, someone that should be in the area, so following them in, catching the door, or you know, nosing around your rooms. If that server room is not secure, they're going to be able to get in. That is where, that's the heartbeat of your um, property, right there in regards to your, your servers, your PMS, POS sometimes. There's a plethora of other items that can be in there. It's not your storage room. Guys, uh, food shouldn't be in there, drink shouldn't be in there, luggage left by clients shouldn't be in there. If you do have to share space, um, use cages um, in the proper way, right? Talk to a security analyst on what cages are useful, what are not. A cabinet is, is not, right? What if it overheats? So make sure you're really looking that up before you put those in place. Um, electronic locks are always going to be better than physical keys that can be stolen, misplaced, broken. Um, those also have the ability to change the passcode over time. And what can be eliminated um, if there is a breach? Entire operating systems can be breached. Customer data can be obtained. So this is a huge issue in regards to access. We want to limit that. If your maintenance people, your front desk staff, your housekeeping staff don't know to be on the lookout, how can they help you protect your data? And so again, all of those social engineering tactics that maybe do not come up in regards to credit card data are very key here. Uh, we are running into our last 15 minutes of the call today. And so what I wanna do is make sure we get through our last few slides, open up our forum. Um, I wanted to briefly re-mention the risk assessment. We did have a question or two come in about risk assessments. If that's something you're interested in that you're not doing with things at this time, we can certainly put you on the phone with the right people. If you currently have a risk assessment done and maybe you're new to your property, please still reach out. Uh, we want to make sure you identify vulnerabilities that maybe you don't know that you have and help you with next steps to ensure your property is safe. 
Um, Kayla, any last words on risk assessments from your perspective? No, definitely reach out to our team. Um, definitely, you, with you being at the property, you may have some rose-colored lenses on um, from working mm -hmm. so hard and being so diligent about other important items that need to be covered, right? You're putting out fires, you're dealing with guests, you're ensuring other things are in place. Um, and so this is what we do every day. And so please just allow us to kind of walk in with brand new eyes and take a look at some things that you may not necessarily even see on a daily basis. And remember that um, sometimes budgetary constraints are going to get into play and you may not be able to reach compliance in that year. But make sure you're working towards it, you're making the proper steps. You can always do your best diligence and that goes a long way. But if you're not documenting that progress, you may be doing yourself a disservice. Um, so next up is data security is boring, we are not. Um, Kayla, I'm going to let you take this one as you talk with a ton of <laughs> clients in regards to training and this one is a key. Sure, sure, absolutely. So um, that's one of our favorite uh, quotes that we use here at Venza because compliance is a dry topic, quite honestly. It's it's hard to, um, uh, to have your employees train on and then talk about and different things like that. And so one of the things that we have here at Venza, one of the things we say rather is that compliance is boring, uh, but we are not. And so in order to inject just a little bit of fun um, we have some activities um, located inside of the LMS. And so you may be wondering uh, where they are if you haven't seen them already or you haven't attended one of our weekly uh, demonstrations of the platform. If uh, you are, if you have access um, as a manager to the manager dashboard, you have a tab titled resources. And so under resources, you'll see a, another tab that says activities and under activities, there are crossword puzzles, matching exercises. Um, we have also provided the answer key for you as well. So no need for you to struggle um, in getting those. And so this will generate some, um, some knowledge, some awareness and some fun for your employees. Um, and so one of the things that this is great for would be a group training session, uh, interjecting this there. Um, have some fun with it, maybe even create um, a competition around who completes it the fastest. Maybe it's for candy, bragging rights, whatever you want to do. Um, but the most important uh, aspect of this is engagement and uh, ensuring that they're knowledgeable uh, regarding certain, impo certain important uh, terms. Absolutely. Um, I think group training is a, is a great exercise for you and your team to start that conversation, heighten awareness. And this is a way to engage during those modules, during that training session. So I completely agree. If you have trouble accessing those, please let us know. Um, our last and final slide before we go into our open session, I do want to remind you, those of you that need help in regards to any component of your Venza training, Venza awareness program, risk assessment, you can always email tickets at venzagroup.com. Um, in the, the rare event that Kayla and I are at a conference in a business meeting, um, what have you, you will reach our army of people that will put you in touch with the right folks. Um, sometimes that may be an escalation, right, to get you to the right person, but we promise we'll get you there. Um, if you have a direct question for a security analyst, go ahead and put that right in the ticket, right? Like, this is for your security team. We'll make sure we get it over to the right people. We do have a new system. Those of you that have been using our old system in the past, you may have to clear your cache. Sometimes those links are real stubborn. We want to send you to the wrong place. But do know that we have a new ticket system, and we're going to be actually implementing a series of new support tools to help your training needs. Um, that being said, we want to go into our open form of questions. Kayla, I want to turn it back over to you. If there's anything I've missed through this webinar um, or any housekeeping items that I've missed. No, April, I don't think you've missed a thing. I think we've covered just about everything. Uh, don't forget, uh, before you leave, those four handouts that we have, we've mentioned it uh, several times throughout today's webinar, uh, especially that checklist. Easy way to uh, go ahead and go through um, a quick little handout of what uh, you are currently, uh, what you currently have in place at your property or maybe something that you need to include. It's, um, it's there for your utilization. Um, I am checking the chat box. I don't see any questions there, nor do I see any further questions in the chat box, but we will stick around for the next 10 minutes or so to see if there's any questions that uh, become available. I also think uh, we're gonna go ahead and open up 
uh, open up the audio as well, right, April? So that yeah, if that. you'd rather yeah, verbalize those questions, you can. Definitely, guys, go ahead and hit us with your questions. Um, we're not scared to get the hard ones because we know how to get you to the right <laughs> people if we don't know the answer. Um, I will note that um, I won't call this person out by name unless you, you know them and can see them on the attendee list, but there is a Venza executive on the call today. So if you want to ask your really hard questions, uh, we can make sure that they hear them. And so uh, feel free to shout those out or put them in the questions box. Uh, I do appreciate your attendance today. This will be recorded and put on our website. You'll also get an email thanking you for attending with a recording if you want to share this with any of your team. Um, and so I'm just going to sit back and wait for the questions to flow in. If not, we will close this out probably close to the hour mark. Awesome. And thank you so much for your partnership. Thanks for joining. Okay, well, I guess I will shout out for the folks still on the line. Um, not to forget our next webinar will be around November on CCPA. I know that about the beginning, but just a shout out for our next webinar. Absolutely. That's going to be an excellent webinar that's coming up. Uh, the California Consumer Protection Act. Is that right, April? Um, like, is that Act. right? Privacy, privacy Act. So close. Um, but that is a very hot topic. Um, it does not mean that, oh, I'm not in California, so that doesn't pertain to me. Um, it is about the residents of California, similar to GDPR, not exactly the same, but similar to uh, GDPR. So definitely something that you may want to join. Um, not only that, but April, wouldn't you agree that uh, these privacy acts are something that is becoming more and more uh, prevalent throughout the states? Um, I agree. Um, and I was just reminded from that wonderful executive on the phone that we do have two CCPA posters available for our teams. And so if anybody's interested in that and get a head start, we do have those posters available and we can send those to you. We have GDPR posters as well. So it seems like privacy is only getting more complicated as our criminals. Absolutely. I mean, criminals are making this a full-time job. Um, eight, 10, 12 hours a day, they are trying to obtain your data and become more and more creative in the process of obtaining it. So has to be top of mind. Well, I did say we would stay till the hour mark, but it's pretty quiet on the phone. And so I think um, to let everyone go back about their day, we can go ahead and close this out. If you think of something in the meantime, hit tickets at vincentgroup.com or email me and Kayla directly. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, happy holidays for whatever's coming up, whether it's Halloween to Christmas to New Year's. And um, thank you for coming. Have a great one. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.